Have you tried the petroleum jelly nail hack yet? Petroleum jelly, Vaseline on your nails. It really helps keep them hydrated. This is also a great tip if you are prone to getting hangnails. It'll just keep the cuticles soft and reduce hangnail formation. I really love this Vaseline all over body balm stick. It's great for reducing chafing in the inner arms and between the thighs. This Vaseline Intensive Care Deep Moisture Body Cream, is it just me or is this very similar to the creamy jelly that they used to have, I wanna say? Petrolatum is the main ingredient skin protectant in a cream base. Don't be afraid of the isopropyl mirror state. That's not pore clogging unless you're a rabbit ear model. If you missed my video reviewing the best of the Up and Up brand, this is so underrated. Um, I don't think this is the right price for it. Anyway, you can use it on the face, you can use it on the body. It's fragrance free. It, it goes on like a dream. I highly recommend it. This video is all about hidden uses of different skincare products as they are not advertised. And I've got to say, check out my recent video on getting even skin tone on the body. Panoxol, benzoyl peroxide, um, actually can help with a condition known as progressive macular hypomelanosis. The appearance of lighter spots on your body usually starts on the trunk. And as the name implies, it progressively spreads to involve like the upper arms and the upper back. It's not contagious, but it's thought to be related to cutie bacterium acnes, the acne causing bacteria, which benzoyl peroxide targets. So using this as a wash can help control that condition. And of course you guys know my hack about using this for under the underarms to control body odor. Just lather it there in the shower, under your arms, let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and rinse it off. It will deodorize your underarms because it reduces the amount of bacteria under the arms that break down sweat and lead to body odor. You can also use this on your feet to cut down on foot odor. And if you have that foot condition pitted keratolysis, it's due to a bacteria on the feet that makes them like slimy and smell really, really foul. It's common in teen boys, especially if they go like wearing sneakers without socks, the sweat, um, anyways. Um, yeah, it's called pitted keratolysis because it leaves these little pits on the bottom of the feet and it creates a really strong odor panoxyl or just benzoyl peroxide wash in general to the feet can help with that. And if you have not tried my mosquito bite hack with these hydrocolloid patches, you don't necessarily have to use these because they are on the pricier side for just doing it for the purpose of the mosquito bite. But the hydrocolloid works so well, A, to just like silence the itch from the bite, but it also absorbs the inflammatory exudate. The inflammatory fluid helps shrink the bite so it's not as swollen. This has been a saving grace this summer for me. But their nose patch, meant for pimples, is good if you get sebaceous filaments. Sebaceous filaments are just little protrusions of sebum uh, that are more visible in people who have oily skin. And these can actually help just remove them. Hydrocolloid nose patch is a lot gentler in my experience compared to those Biore pore strips, although those are another alternative as well um, for sebaceous filaments. They can kind of absorb them and help pull them off. I just find that the Biore pore strips often are a lot more irritating. Now there's another condition where you have these little clustering of vellus hairs. These are not as tacky. To, these aren't tacky like the Biore strips, so they don't grab the little vellus hairs. So the Biore strips are better for that. Why does this Liliana Naturals brand sound so familiar to me? Have they rebranded? Is this something I've seen before? Looks like they have a niacinamide and licorice root brightening serum. Um, so niacinamide helps with uh, dark spots because it reduces the transfer of pigment packets from melanocytes to neighboring keratinocytes and then licorice root is anti-inflammatory so both those ingredients do help with a dark spots now you do have to be careful the grapefruit peel oil can be irritating this looks like it has a bunch of other emollients aloe vera has compounds in it called allicins that also can help with hyperpigmentation although the relative abundance of them in aloe and aloe juice is kind of variable it's just depends on the formula overall. They have a sunscreen, $24.99, SPF 30. It does not appear to be water resistant. Zinc oxide probably will leave a cast. It does not appear to be tinted. It has cockadoo plum, which for me personally, I find my skin, which is not overall very sensitive, by the way, my skin tends to get irritated by that ingredient. 
That's a me issue though. See, this is why, you know, people will always ask like, what is the ingredient in product X, Y, and Z that always breaks me out and or always irritates my skin? And that's just not predictable because everyone's skin responds to things differently. And an ingredient can perform very differently in different products too, depending on the formulation overall. Like I have used things with that ingredient and it's been fine, but I've noticed that a lot of products that have it, I tend to find irritating. They also have an eye cream, of course. Now, eye creams are not necessary in terms of just moisturizing around the eyes, but some people really enjoy them. And then there are certain eye creams that are specifically formulated with active ingredients uh, meant to go around the eye area in a way that's gonna be easier to tolerate on the delicate eyelid skin. What does this have? Niacinamide rosehip seed oil, which has antioxidants in it. Ascorbyl palm palmitate is a stable form of vitamin C. It may help ward off oxidative stress. Sunflower seed oil actually has some data as a body oil for people with atopic dermatitis. Check out my recent video though on body oils. I, co I cover the research on different oils for the body at least. This isn't an eye cream, but we talk about sunflower seed oil there. You guys know how much I love a cleansing oil. Olinda cleansing oil. I've never heard of this brand. Cahoba seed oil, chia seed oil. Chia seeds have fatty acids, which are good for the skin. Sunflower seed oil again. This has emulsifiers too. So I might like to try this. $25.49, that doesn't seem too bad actually for four ounces. And they have a facial oil for dull, sensitive, or hyperpigmented skin. So presumably this is going to have a skin brightening effect, targeting dull skin. Just the rosehip oil. Rosehip oil does have a lot of antioxidants in it, fatty acids, but the extent to which it has that really just depends on how it was harvested and the time of the year and all these kind of variables. Once upon a time, people were claiming it was like a natural form of retinol, which it's not. Here's another facial oil. I mentioned I don't use facial oils because they don't really reduce water loss. They don't have humectants to the same extent as like a moisturizer, but they're popular and they definitely can help. They actually can help with exfoliating because they help soften cornea sites that are trying to slough off and then just the act of rubbing them on the skin helps with exfoliating maracuja seed oil again rose seed oil jojoba seed oil chia seed oil sunflower seed oil pompous face mist face mists are nice to put on like before you moisturize if you haven't washed your face but i don't really use them if you were to use something like this without a moisturizer it could it just evaporate and dry out your skin more. But these botanic compounds presumably have anti-inflammatory effects too, so you may get some benefit in that regard. This is new from Shea Moisture, Even and Radiant Raw Honey Daily Face Lotion. Honey is rich in humectants and is anti-inflammatory. It's used in medicine for wound healing. Sodium hyaluronate, a humectant. Coconut oil. Coconut oil has been shown to be good for atopic dermatitis and small studies, albeit. Safflower seed oil, niacinamide, again, that's good for not only hyperpigmentation, but also for uh, the, the moisture barrier. This looks promising. I'm not seeing like fragrance or anything. Huh. Then they have in this line, exfoliating toner pads. What is in this? Witch hazel, niacinamide, salicylic acid. So these are salicylic acid pads. Doesn't say what the percentage of salicylic acid is, or I can't make that out. Shea butter, honey. Hmm, those look like maybe they'd be helpful just in terms of improving skin tone because the salicylic acid may help with fading some hyperpigmentation and also acne control. Then there's a night cream. I'm kind of excited to see these. Shea moisture. I haven't seen anything new from them in a while. This has coconut oil in it too. Now, some people say that coconut oil aggravates their acne, but by and large, it's a pretty good moisturizing ingredient. Honey, again, it's humectin. I need like to try these sometime in niacinamide. I wonder if there's a cleanser in this line too. So Undefined Beauty has a new sunscreen. I haven't tried it yet. Um, this is their zinc oxide one though that I really like. It's tinted. It's really nice. It's a fluid. It's good if you have like a medium to, to paler skin tone. If you have a really deep skin tone though, it will still leave a cast, but they came out with a new sunscreen that is a <coughs> chemical sunscreen. I don't see it here, aka organic sunscreen. 
I need to try it. So there you go. Facial oils are another thing that are not advertised in this way, but they actually are something that you should think about if you have dry flaky skin that you're wanting help exfoliating because they really can help with exfoliating. You know, they're marketed as moisturizers, but they're not really that great as moisturizers. They don't really um, help with moisture retention or reducing water loss from the skin. They just soften and smooth, but they, in doing that, they can help with exfoliating which I personally find is really great when you have dry chapped lips. If you have that dry flaky peely stuff, people will want to scrub that away, use like sugar scrubs, and that's just not the best approach. Just a little bit of an oil actually can help a lot more rather than disrupting the underlying barrier of your lips. These cooling face globe things, they can help with depuffing. That's sort of how they're hyped up for ice rolling or whatever, but these are also helpful if you find yourself getting warm and starting to flush, namely if you have rosacea, that can happen. But they're also helpful if you are feeling like you're getting warm and you're someone who has melasma because heat can actually aggravate melasma. So these can help, these kind of cooling globes just keep the skin cool and reduce that blood flow that could aggravate melasma. These eczema soothing creams, if you're someone who finds that facial moisturizers burn and sting, try using a moisturizer, and usually they're marketed for the body, that has colloidal oatmeal in it. It's a skin protectant, and it does not burn or sting on the skin. A lot of like facial moisturizers, I think a lot of what it is that burns and stings is the water content of the formula and the maybe the pH overall. It's just a guess, but in my experience, especially if you have an impaired skin barrier, you have atopic dermatitis, a lot of moisturizers for the face, a lot of lotions can sting. Um, but I find that products that have colloidal oatmeal as the active ingredient, which is skin protectant, can really help. This one by La Roche-Posay is good. Here's another one. You totally can use this if you're a woman, even though it says you can't. The main issue with the 5% though is that it's more likely to cause hair growth like on your face if it gets on your face than the 2%, but as long as you're careful with how you apply it, it's not an issue. Unwanted hair growth is also a side effect of oral minoxidil for hair loss, but we're finding that you're, we're able to get away with prescribing really, really, really low doses of oral minoxidil patients like prescribing a two and a half milligram tablet and having them cut it in half gets um, good hair regrowth with fewer side effects. This on the other hand, I have a video reviewing this, um, dietary supplements you have to take with a huge grain of salt because their hurdle to getting to you is much, much, much lower compared to a pharmaceutical. They don't have to demonstrate efficacy or safety. Now, Viviscal does have some research behind it, although it is sponsored by Viviscal, so again, you need to take it with a grain of salt. Um, and I've talked about the issue with high-dose biotin, which is why I don't recommend Viviscal. It can interfere with blood tests. Part of the workup for hair loss is to check iron. A lot of times people who have hair loss have low iron, but the role of iron in hair loss is not like clearly elucidated. Um, sometimes correcting the iron deficiency does not do anything for the hair loss, unfortunately. But all that to say, like, if you've heard that iron is good for hair loss, be careful because you want to make sure A, you do have iron deficiency, and B, you want to figure out why you have it because there are a lot of possible reasons for iron deficiency. Like, if you have heavy periods or maybe you have bleeding somewhere. I mean, there are lots of possible reasons. Um, and iron supplements are not easy to take. They can cause side effects. So definitely don't just take iron supplements because you heard they were good for the hair because it can have adverse outcomes. Plus, you, if you are truly iron deficient, you want to find out why. Ah, another product which you can use not as directed for foot fungus, toenail fungus. Believe it or not, there is a small amount of research to show that Vapo, Vicks VapoRub does help with toenail fungus, possibly because of the eucalyptus and or camphor are antifungal, but it does seem it does seem to be helpful. You gotta make sure you apply it all around the toenails and underneath to them. Also apply it between the toes. Fungus loves to be in the spaces between your toes. And then wash your hands after you apply it. Here's another one, um, product that you can use not as directed for post-acne erythema, post-inflammatory erythema, redness. 
Um, a little drop of this on the skin once a day can help with that. It's also helpful for persistent facial redness if you have rosacea. These are good if you get hives or if you have itchy skin. Apply a cool compress, it will help reduce hive formation and reduce the sensation of itch. Here's another hidden gem over here in the laxative section, the mineral oil. You can use this, again, like um, to exfoliate dry, rough skin. It's very good, actually, if you have dry, cracked lips to just use a little bit on your lips. And it works pretty well to dissolve cosmetic residue, water-resistant sunscreen before washing your face. And it's only $1.99. Check it out, you guys. Lumify has eye care skincare products a brightening eye cream with niacinamide and vitamin c and optic brighteners this has licorice room shea tetrahexyl decil ascorbate is a stable form of vitamin c yeah and it also has caffeine that can constrict the blood vessels and temporarily improve the look of dark under eye circles niacinamide again we talked about that reducing the transfer of pigment from melanocytes to keratinocytes euphasia ophionalis they're calling eye bright extract never heard of that <laughs> hyaluronic acid will temporarily improve the look of fine lines i don't know this looks promising for an eye cream now this they have a lash and brow serum you have to be careful with these lash serums they have um, prostaglandin analogs which is how they work similar to the prostaglandin analog that is prescription latisse for lash growth they also make these types uh, as this is marketed here for brow enhancement as well the issue there is that these ingredients can actually cause um, hyperpigmentation around the skin around the eyes and can also change the color of your eyes. That being said, uh, bimatoprost, which is what is in prescription Latisse, is actually something we use to treat post-inflammatory hypopigmentation, uh, which is very hard to treat. Bimatoprost is helpful because of the side effect of hyperpigmentation. So this is another one of those things that can be used in ways in which you don't think about it. Although I would not suggest using a lash serum for any white spots you may have. Definitely see your dermatologist, make sure you know what is going on with them and why you have them. But all that to say, prostaglandin analogs actually can be helpful for hypopigmentation. The other issue with the lash growth serums is that they do end up causing a lot of eyelid irritation, including Latisse, and that can cause problems for your lash health and your eyelid health and your eyes. What's this three-in-one micellar cleansing water and eye makeup remover with what hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, and niacinamide? I imagine this would burn and sting in the eyes, which is often what my experience with micellar waters for eye makeup removal. Comment below though if you use a micellar water. Contact lens and lash extension friendly. Desyl glucoside is a very, very mild surfactant. It's, yeah, desyl glucoside is commonly found in a lot of hair care products, especially marketed to people who have like 4C hair because it's very mild, a very gentle surfactant, but you can become allergic to it. It was like one of the allergens of the year a few years ago. Um, doesn't mean that it's bad or anything, but just be aware that it's something that if you're having problems with your hair care products causing rashes on your neck and your scalp and you're using products with that maybe you have an allergy to it it's a suspected allergen in hair care products and it's in this so that would be another reason to avoid it if you were allergic but you don't have to go out of your way to avoid it just because people develop allergy to it unless you were allergic you know it's there it's a mild surfactant Yikes. Uh -oh. All right, guys, I hope you found this video fun, educational, informative, all about different uses for products aside from what they are marketed for. So if you like this video on the Enslate, I'm going to put my recent Costco shop with me video. They have a lot of great new skincare deals at Costco you're going to want to check out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.